Some Pibbles. J-Dog back for a goddamn album review. Everybody's been constantly goddamn asking me, but I got the goddamn thing two days late. Not about late. They shipped it on the release date right before, and I got it the Saturday. It came out whatever Thursday or some bullshit. Is the new goddamn DSI. You got the shirt in. Get the shirt. Get the shirt. Dog order CD, LP, and uh, T-shirt. Got it in. And, uh, you know, so this is on Monday. I'm recording it. Got it on Saturday. Wanted to give it some thorough fucking listens. So I listened to it five times now. And goddamn, I must say, banger. I'm sure the goddamn LP, in case you haven't given a fuck, for all you digital download freeloader fucking pussy boys. Here's the LP. Nice and sharp. See, dude, in person, I don't know what the, the, the cover looks totally fine to me. Um, Yeah, I, I don't see the problem at all. I mean, is it the best fucking album cover in the world? No, but it's... it's that's far from being the goddamn worst. That's for goddamn sure. Um, yeah, I, I think I think it looks pretty goddamn cool, to be honest with you. I, I, I've got no issues with it. Rough and tough band foe. Fucking looks like they could kick the fucking shit out of those pussy boy hipsters twink mold. Mm -hmm. Looking grim, looking old. Old guy still showing these fucking young bucks how it's done. Like that extra piece of fucking art, too. That comes with the uh, printed in her sleeve with the lyrics. Gotta have the DSI lyrics. Best lyrics in death metal, of course. Everybody knows that, naturally. Only idiots that like stupid fucking lyrics like Burzum or something fucking stupid thing otherwise. Wax, in case you haven't give a fuck. So, must say... Absolute fucking 666 smashed canoe skulls. Left posers pounded in the dust. I don't know what other people's reviews and shit are saying. I just see in the comments box, people, what the new deal side review coming? Dog, what are you going to do to side? It's cool. I'm glad people value my opinion. I like it. I think it's slightly weird, though. It's like, just listen to your own. What do you, like, what do you need my opinion for? Um, maybe it's not a slight curiosity you could ask, but... Just listen to the goddamn thing. Um, make up your own goddamn mind. CD right here. Goddamn CD going right the fuck on out. Um, I would have to say, yeah, I would think I, I think this is the uh the album of 2024. I mean, it's gonna be it's a toss-up between this and the new attic. Well, if I had to pick one, just because, you know, DSI being, you know, a personal favorite up there since a little kid and Addicts a newer band and uh, just how uh, back to task, I mean, about back to task and their fell off task, but just this album definitely was really, really good. The thing is, is like everyone says that for the new album, especially bands, oh, can't wait for the new one. You put it on, it's either okay or same old, same old or just whatever. It's but definitely not your best, dude, that, that, that type of shit. Uh, this is up there in the tops. So actually, so to make this uh, review a little bit more fun, because honestly, what the hell is more going to say? It's fucking great. I mean, what's your favorite song on there, dog? Uh, it's it's hard to say, dude. I, I really like the first song from Unknown Heights. From Unknown Heights, You Shall Fall. I really like the second song, Doomed to Die. And then Banished by Sin, I liked a, a lot. Bury the Cross with Your Christ was still fucking great. But I mean, I've heard that so many times that uh, it wasn't, it wasn't, um, it, it's a, uh, wasn't a fresh listen, obviously, because I've heard I've, I've probably listened to that song at least 25 times. Um, but as far as the songs I didn't know, first song, second song, probably Banished by Sin, then probably The Light Defeated. But it's hard to say. I mean, every single song is very, very good. And, and I said it before, I think the, the, the weakest song on the album is Sever the Tongue. And again, not that it's a shitty song, not it's not even a filler song. It's it's definitely a good song. I thoroughly enjoyed it, but I would say that is the uh my least favorite song on the goddamn album. I would have to say so. Every song that st stood out to me even more so. So I was gonna. I brought all the DSI albums here. It's just the CDs because well, one LP because like, well, one of the CDs is at the goddamn. I left at the goddamn shop. I was listening like again recently uh, last week. And I left it. Forgot the goddamn shop. Um, so it's there. So I was like, I'm not delaying this video any goddamn more. But he's asking me every goddamn day for this. So I'll post this up and then I already got a few videos scheduled. So this will probably go up Thursday or Friday. So whatever. Better late than ever, right? Goddamn it. Um. So I'm going to rank all the DSI albums in order. That way, it's kind of archived for myself, too. But don't be surprised with this ranks, because goddamn, it's fucking up there. Now, is it their best album? No. But um, 
it's 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 at the top, goddammit. So let's goddamn go. No further fucking ado. Tops, number one for the dog. Again, it's number one for the dogs. It's the first one fucking uh let's actually let's see what put a fucking the uh what did Putskin think of the new DSI? Yo, Snake! What, did you listen to the new DSI? Oh, yeah, dog. I heard it downstairs. It was fucking banger! Killer as goddamn fuck. What was your favorite song? I don't know, dog. Tough fucking pick. I'm thinking title track or maybe Woke from God. God damn. Kick my tail into my fucking asshole. Kick your tail in your asshole? Yeah, shit. I was gonna lose my other goddamn eye or another goddamn body part without this and that motherfucker. Killer. I'm on the air. Yeah. Think it's so, dog. That new attic, it's giving us a run for its money. Especially that goddamn song, Sonata Surrender. Probably the song of the year. Holy fuck, new DSI. Can't top it. It just screams toughness. Screams toughness? Oh, yeah. The Pussy Bows Twink Molders, they definitely ain't gonna like it. That's real death metal right there. Old guys know best. Sure do. Snake dug it, too. Any fucking who. Best goddamn DSI, in my per personal opinion. It's a, it's a close, close toss-up between this one and the first one. The first one's the most nostalgic and classic and influential and where it started and originality and GB's vocals nobody sound like to this day. Literally nobody's vocals sound like the first goddamn uh, deicide up the goddamn date. So, um, hey, what are you doing, goddamn it? Um, but this is the first one I heard and I like the lyrics the best. Everything, songs, favorite on there is goddamn Serpents of the Light. Look at those cigs. Got them back in the year 2000 when they... With a headline and the ducks opened up for him. Mighty Ducks, Marduk. They were touring for Incineratum. And uh, Marduk was touring for Le Grande Dance with Cobb. One of the best goddamn shows ever. So, number one for me. Favorite DSI album. Number two. And it's a close goddamn second. It's something like, fuck didn't take these out of jewel cases for. Your poser ass better have seen these before. You better have these fucking things memorized. Otherwise, what the fuck are you even doing watching this goddamn channel? First album, self-titled, DSI, DSI, SIGs on it as well, goddamn it. That's number goddamn two. Number three, fucking uh, Once Upon the Cross. Mm -hmm. Which it seems like, uh, it seems like that's kind of like the fan favorite of the catalog uh, based on what they do live and how people react, which is uh, kind of strange because it definitely, was, 20 years ago, that wasn't the case. It was always... The fan favorite, it was Legion. It was definitely Legion based on what people would say. So when when by the time like Incinerate was out, I would say, and I was going to shows, there were some people I knew they thought the first album was the best, but the overwhelming majority always said Legion. So I find that kind of strange, but in a good way, because I always thought that was kind of refreshing. Uh, I was like, it's always kind of sick of hearing all these dumb asses just talking about the first two albums only. Like, the fuck? You don't, how the fuck do you not like OTC and goddamn serpents? That's as manly as it goddamn gets. What the hell are you talking about? If you like catchy death metal, you like those two fucking records. I mean, I, I don't know what the fuck to tell you. And, and, and if you don't, I'm, I'm looking at you fucking weird like you're dressing Barbie dolls. That's for goddamn sure. No doubt about it. Fourth goddamn bestie. You side fucking legion. I'm signing the back of this one, the band photo. At least you haven't given a goddamn fuck. But uh, Legion, uh, favorite song out here is probably the one. It seems like no, it's not always everyone's favorite. And I never heard them play it live until the goddamn Le Legion tour. Uh, but it's Behead the Prophet and the Lord Shall Live. That was always my goddamn favorite song on it. So it was cool uh, that they could finally see them do that live when they did that uh, Legion tour. I saw them uh, two times. I saw them in Columbus and at the Cleveland show. In case you happen to goddamn give a fuck. Fifth best album. Think I'm gonna have to do it. Gonna have to do it. And I, this this never fucking happens. Think it's a new album. I think this is probably the best album since Serpents of Light. Gotta say it. Everything about it, dude, is fucking great. Catchy as shit. Glenn's vocals are better than ever. Um, the highs, the lows, the, the uh vocal tones where they're singing along a lot of fucking parts. The um the bass sounds really good. It's not this bullshit where the bass is buried. Like, is there even a bass on this goddamn record? Uh, you know, some death metal albums, you're like, I can't, or black metal especially. Uh, there's a lot of albums, I can't, I literally can't even hear the goddamn bass. Bass, bass shines through like a motherfucker. The goddamn misfit static age, goddamn it. <laughs> this is a static age, goddamn bass is louder than the goddamn guitar. Um, Steve Asheen lost no goddamn gas, no mileage. I don't know how that fucking geezer is still blasting like that, but cool as shit. Uh, 
definitely be in there because I would love to interview Steve as well. I just didn't ask and push because I already figured I'm pushing my goddamn luck getting a goddamn GV interview. But if there's time, we'll see. I would love to uh, interview Steve as well. And hey, I'm definitely going to ask Glenn and that too. How much longer realistically do you think you're going to be able to physically do this? Um, but especially Steve. I mean, who do you know that's going to be in their, in their 60s that are doing blast beats like that? The closest person I can think of is uh, Roy from Embalmer because um, there's blast beats. But that's a little bit goddamn different because DSide as a whole, probably there is more blast beats, I would say. I mean, I didn't fucking add it up. So don't come over here and say anything goddamn stupid. But. As a whole, off the top of my head, I would think that there's more in DSI. And if there's not, okay, well, DSI plays longer sets than Embalmer does, and Embalmer doesn't tour the goddamn worlds. So when DSI goes on tour and shits, Steve's got to do that shit night after night after night after night for 60 to 65 minutes where they play live. Boy, ain't doing that. Who do you know in death metal again? Well, well, uh, fucking uh, so-and-so's doing it, and he plays in Ozzy, and then there's Motorhead, and... The, the, the guys have blast beats, man. That's not the same fucking thing, even by any stretch. So, yes, how long can he physically do it for? Because what, what is, what is, how old is Steve? He's, he's got to be at least 50. He's got, I think he's around 55. 54 at the very fucking youngest. 54, 55, 56, somewhere in that goddamn area. Five years will be here before you fucking know it. That's, that, he's at, he's at the city. So, curious about that. So, kudos there. Uh, the guitar solos by the new Bucks. Gotta say, dude, guitar solos are fan. Fucking tastic on it. Killer guitar solos. Not those just dumb guitar solos where you're like, let's just fill this in with a solo to look fucking cool. We'll, 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 you know, whether we're the Iron Maid, the goddamn death metal, just to throw a goddamn solo in, but it's got no fucking. Those goddamn things should give you goddamn goosebumps every time you hit a guitar solo. So I thought they were really good. So those newbies, they were there. They, they were fucking some good filling guys. You know what I mean? A good fit. Gotta say. Good fucking fit. Here's where it gets a little tricky now, then, as far as next bests in line. I've been saying it for a while. I didn't know if it would be the next best, I guess, prior to the new album. I would have thought it was the next best in Serpents. I don't know if I would have said that prior to having to actually put it in writing, like I'm doing now, or on video, however the fuck you want to word it. I, I think it is. the next. My next favorite, which I thoroughly fucking enjoyed, was the previous DSI, Overtures of Blasphemy. I loved this record. What's really cool about this record uh, which I love Glenn's highs. This is the only record that he doesn't do any highs. It's all lows. Um, I was disappointed on the tour. They didn't do the, the opening song, One With Satan, because that's probably my favorite song. Every song is fucking killer, but uh, I don't know why they didn't do that. I thought that song was a fucking awesome as hell. Uh, so, hey, Snake, hey. He wants to hear the new DSI again. I got to kick him out. Dog, I'm fucking bored. I'm going downstairs. I'm fucking hitting replay on that new Dia side. Got to brush up on it still. Understandable. Um, yeah, so I would say this is next to goddamn line. So the last two Dia sides, fuck. They're on point in my goddamn book. And I got to say it, I was thinking it as I was listening to the new Dia side. Um, easily, this was better than the last Cannibal Corpse. I think the last two Dia sides, Overtures and then Banished by Sin, we're definitely better than the last two cannibals, for sure. Yeah, because uh, Chaos Horrific, Banished by Sin, is definitely better. Definitely better. And then uh, Violence Unimagined, uh, yeah, I definitely like Overtures of Blasphemy better. No no doubt about it. Not not even, like, so there's not even a maybe. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, yeah. Uh, fuck. Yeah, yeah, I have to fucking say that. So, next, I would have to go with uh, Scars of the Crucifix. It's the A's version, goddamn it. Original fucking pressing when it first came out. Um, yeah, I would say this is next. Best songs on here, in my opinion, the first two easily. Self titled Scars of the Crucifix, which I usually play at every show. And then I always love the second song, Mad at God. I wish they would play that in more of the sets. Um, but they, I mean, they, they leave out tons of fucking albums. So I'm going to have a, have a goddamn talk with GB about that in that interview. Assuming I goddamn get it. Um, next, I would go with. Yeah, I'll go with this. In the Minds of Evil. That would be the goddamn next. Um, hits on here. I mean, everyone, uh, the kind of hit that was when it first came out was God Kill, which is a great song. My favorites are probably the title track, In the Minds of Evil. 
And I really like uh, Trample the Cross. Um, then probably God Kill. Misery of One's really good too. Um, yeah, I would say this is the next solid uh, in line. After that, I'm going with Hell with God. I'd say that's the next in goddamn line. Uh, favorite time here is definitely the song Conviction. The fucking music video is hilarious too, the Claymation video. Uh, the title track, To Hell with God. Um, probably then Servant of the Enemy. Probably my favorites, but definitely the hits are Conviction and uh, To Hell with God, the title track. After that, I would go. Hmm. I would say, as an all, I like this all more. One that, I mean, people like it now, but everybody bashed the hell when it came out of here, no pun intended, is uh, Incinerate Them. See those goddamn SIGs on there, too? Again, this is when the album was brand new when I bought it, and then I saw them on this tour. Um, I mean, nah. Dude, Bible Basher is a fan fucking tastic song. Like, what in the hell is shit and fucking talk are you talking about? Um, and then I al always loved Worst Enemy. That's my second favorite song for sure. Um, Standing in the Flames is very, very good. Refusal of Pendants is bit, that's the last track. Super fucking good. But favorite songs in order would definitely be Bible Basher, Worst Enemy, probably Refusal of Pendants, and probably Halls of Worship. But every song on here I like. It seemed like most people liked the song. Well, it seemed like Bible Basher was the hit. But a lot of people liked the song a lot uh, the most. The gift that keeps on giving. And I do like that song. It's a good song. But I, I mean, I thought Worst Enemy was way better. Um, but uh, I remember the people that were the reviews. Most people like they thought this album sucked. But the general consensus was, oh, it's got Bible Basher and uh, the gift that keeps on giving. I'm like, that's, that's all you got? What do you mean? Bible has got better shit than that on there. So I, I remember thinking that during the time when it. Uh, came out next in line uh for me is a uh, stench of redemption the thing is about this album that i didn't like is the, the third track desecration that's a snooze fest i didn't like that song and the cover song black knight that was dumb uh, wasn't a fan of that but it's got bangers on there uh favorites probably crucified for the innocence then after that, the title track, Stents of Redemption. After that, probably either Death to Jesus or Homage for Satan. Flip a fucking coin. But those are goddamn the hits. You know, I liked every song other than the Desecration song. I thought that song pretty much fucking blew chunks. And then I just pulled the LP for this because I saw the CD stuff at the goddamn shop. Again, another round I think people to date still hate, but fuck them, right? Uh, stupid people are stupid people. Again, this is on one of DSI's uh, lesser days, but it still fucking blows away goddamn bolt throw on their best day in my goddamn book. DSI and Torment in Hell. LP. The only actual LP that exists the Boots Garuni, goddamn it. But then I, it came out officially in the box set. Dog owns it, of course, showed the goddamn LP box set. It came out, what, last year? But what they need to do is they need to put this officially on LP because this doesn't have an insert either with the lyrics. What I'd like to see is because when this album came out, CD and LP, there's no band photo photo from that era. So I wish they would find some type of band photo or live photos from this era. Uh, put it on an LP. Um, put a, an unreleased band photo or photos from that era. With the lyric sheet and everything like that. And then, I, if it was Hell's Headbangers putting it out the way the dog would push for it, is you do it just like that. And then the first hundred copies, since all these fucking pussy boy ass fucking posers out there don't like picture this, I would do only a hundred copies on picture this first hundred pictures. With whatever you fucking big boy poser labels is gonna do that. <laughs> you ain't gonna fucking see that shit. If you need metal, go to hell, goddammit. Um, hit me up, whoever owns that. Was this last one on Roadrunner? <laughs> it was fucking Nickelback releasing fucking posers ain't fucking contacting the dog. They, hell's who? Hearing headlights dick in the mouth, they don't fucking know. Sitting there jamming dumbass nickel bass. What a motherfucking disgrace. And then last and definitely least, at first, and this is actually, I don't own the LP of this or the picture of this, which I do want. I didn't buy them back things. I just picked up the CD and I kept it. 
And I was like, yeah, this sound kind of fucking blows. I mean, not that it blew like it was it was garbage. I was like, this is boring. But it grew on me. Over, as I put on the years, it is good, but it is still the worst goddamn album. Is um, Till Death Do Us Part. I do enjoy it now. I do. I, I mean, I've listened to it more and more and more. Like, it's a good record. It's still a deicide record. Uh, the lyrics are the worst because it's not the, the, the deicide formula that I always loved. And, and the songs, there, there are still some parts that are kind of boring. Um, but it's got parts that are really catchy, too. Um, so I do want an LP and, uh, I know people, well, oh, you sure some contest, it's on Discog. No shit, it's on Discog. What do you think I didn't look? God damn it. But I mean, I, I, I want to see if I, I prefer to keep it in the $50 range because it's like, it's I remember hell. I remember even hell's had them in stock. <laughs> it's like for 20 bucks. When I see it for $80, I'm feeling like I'm getting fucking bent over and raped, especially like, why is it $80? Nobody even likes this goddamn album. Who the hell's paying that goddamn much for it? Uh, so if somebody has an extra copy, you want to sell it for like 50 bucks. Again, I don't want some fucking beat the hell, dog ear, bent cover, fucking corner, cum crusted cover, fucking SOS pad, fuck you, uh, vinyl scratch, goddamn copy, a mint or damn close to it, mint copy uh, of its, uh, one of the colored vinyls. It was clear vinyl, I believe, and another color. So I would prefer one of the cl uh, color copies and then also the picture disc I'd buy too. Both in the fucking fifty dollar range. If you have it, hit the goddamn dog up. What are the contacts, dog? Fucking emails in the description box. Dumb dumb. I'm the easiest person in the fucking metal scene to get a hold of. If you can't get a hold of me, then you're absolutely goddamn fucking sloth from the Goonies. I don't know what the fuck to tell you. I'm the easiest person in the entire metal scene to get a hold of. You, you don't have to click on my links or anything like that. Where how do you get let me contact YouTube and get his fucking email? What's his contact? It's right in there. It's right in there, goddamn it. Or just go to Hell's Head Bakers on there. Contact that. I, I run that too. So easy as motherfucker to get a hold of. So if you have any, you want to get rid of it, uh, let me know. Uh, but yeah, that's my goddamn DSI fucking review. And then you got them all fucking in there now. So I said just one of those goddamn lame reviews, which I didn't watch any of them. I'm sure there's somebody saying something stupid as shit where they're, they're probably giving it one star, but then they're... they're Reviewing this, the next Sanguizio nutsack or something retarded as fuck, which uh, granted I haven't heard, but it just it ain't better than New Dia side. I don't need to hear know that. I, I can I can safely say I I would bet my life, my entire family's life, my entire fucking bank account, house, company, hell's headbangers, put it all on the line that it ain't better than New Goddamn Dia side. And I don't even need to hear it to fucking know that. But I guarantee there's somebody saying out there saying something stupid as shit like that because a lot of deaf motherfuckers and a lot of stupid motherfuckers out there and a lot of pussy boys. But Deicide reminded us with the goddamn new album. Just like the dog said, if you don't like Deicide, you don't like death metal. Come, let's push the church into the movie. But the guy box getting answered in the morning. Later, goddamn it.